I have realized that it's a progressive disease and it affects your body differently as you get older. So I do a yearly checkup with a genetic doctor once a year and then they look at my testing and see what results have come in, you know, over the, the year and give me referrals where needed. And then I follow through actually and do the referrals that I'm supposed to do. So I feel it's important for me to monitor myself and also my children because it's my body. And I'm going to be the one that knows when something changes more than anybody else. And also giving that to my children and helping them learn that it's their body. It's really important for you to be an advocate for yourself and for your children and to understand what's going on. It's good to know what your patterns are so if something comes out of the pattern that you can address that. It's also important to keep in mind that not everything you have is gonna be related to Febre disease. So if you get something that's outside of your normal sort of expectations, you might need to be evaluated for other, usually more common things. Keep in mind that some doctors may not be familiar with the treatment requirements of Fabry disease, and you may need to remind or prompt your doctor at times. I think it can be overwhelming how many appointments you have to do sometimes, but overall you have to step back and realize it's your health and it's going to help you be monitored to live a better life. There is, um, if you want to look into the recommendations for monitoring, there's a paper first author is Ortiz that goes through and, and it first lists out all of the uh, standard monitoring for adults with Febre disease. And it goes through the kidneys, the heart, the GI symptoms, the peripheral nerve, which is the pain, the central nervous system, which is primarily stroke risk, sort of the whole gamut of symptoms that are commonly reported. Now we have evidence that if we monitor the disease, we pay attention to uh, the different aspects of treatment, that we actually can make a valuable impact and improve people's quality of life as well as their life expectancy. Some recent studies that were done looking at published guidelines found that only about a third of patients follow the protocol. And it was interesting because we actually interviewed the people who, the physicians and the patients, and they all said, yes, we support the guidelines. But a lot of things fell through the cracks. So if you know what your requirements are, then you can make sure, especially that the ones that are your top priority or your top concerns get done. It's important for you, the patient, to stay on top of your monitoring and to be proactive in getting your needs taken care of because you are likely to be the only patient with Febre disease in your doctor's practice. Visit febreconnect.com to download a brochure about Febre disease that will help to keep you and your doctor on track.